Hey guys, and welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week and to sharing some practical security advice along the way. I'm your host and security aficionado, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting November 11th, 2013. It's Microsoft Patch Week, so I need to start with some obligatory software updates. Of course, on Patch Tuesday, Microsoft released eight security bulletins fixing three critical and five important security vulnerabilities in many of their products. The fixes were for Internet Explorer, uh, lots of Windows components, and Word and Outlook. And one of the updates fixed a new zero-day vulnerability I'll talk about a bit later. Now, it was also Adobe Patch Day, and Adobe released some uh, updates for for Flash, the popular uh, web animation player, and for uh, Cold Fusion, a popular web application server. And by the way, the Cold Fusion update apparently fixed the vulnerability attackers were leveraging, a zero-day flaw they were leveraging back in January. However, this apparently is not the flaw that they used to actually breach Adobe's network. But if you're an Adobe user of Flash or Cold Fusion, be sure to get those updates. Finally, this week, OpenSSH's creators uh, released a patch for OpenSSH version 6.2 and 6.3. This actually fixes a vulnerability uh, that's associated with how they handle one of their encryption ciphers, AES-GCM. And it's a vulnerability that is a post-authentication vulnerability. That means an attacker has to have credentials on your OpenSSH server before they can actually exploit it, and you have to be using the vulnerable cipher. So it's not a huge vulnerability, but if you use OpenSSH 6.2, or 6.3, definitely go get that update as well. And of course, by the way, if you want more details on the Microsoft and Adobe Patch Day stuff, be sure to check out our blog because I wrote about all these updates there. Next up, I mentioned one of the Microsoft updates fixed the new zero-day vulnerability. Well, early in the week, researchers from FireEye discovered a new advanced watering hole attack. Remember, watering hole attacks are when bad guys uh, hijack legitimate websites to install malicious code. Anyways, FireEye discovered a particular security-related site, which they have not disclosed, was serving up a new zero-day exploit targeting IE users, people that used IE 7 through 10. And it turns out this uh, was due to the ActiveX control vulnerability that was described in one of Microsoft's alerts. Now, what's interesting about this particular zero-day is it seems very clear that it's being used in advanced targeted attacks, probably by state-sponsored attackers. Uh, it seems very similar, or it has some indicators indicators that are similar to some past APT campaigns. And then one other interesting thing about the malware that this watering hole attack actually serves, or the payload, is that it only infects you in your computer's memory. It doesn't try to uh, gain persistence on your computer. It doesn't drop any files or try to stay persistent when you reboot. And it's doing this to kind of stay under the radar. So anyways, uh, it's clear that this zero-day attack is being used by very, very persistent attackers. So if anything, make Make sure to apply Microsoft's ActiveX kill bit update. And by the way, one thing that can help you against these memory corruption type attacks is a tool Microsoft uses called EMET. So if you haven't looked into using EMET, I recommend you check it out. Next, I want to talk about some of the, the website breaches during the week. First up, this week we learned that the Mac Rumors website, a site used by many Mac people, was, was breached and the attacker was able to steal 860,000 user credentials. So the key takeaway there is, is if you visit Mac Rumors and you have a login, you should definitely change your account details immediately and again, never use the same password anywhere. Now, this particular breach was kind of interesting because the the, the person, the attacker that did it, is actually pasting a lot of pastebin files talking about the breach. And he claims that though he's stolen uh, 860,000 user accounts, and he's posted some proof where he, he shares some credentials of one of the Mac Rumors administrators, he also says he is not a terrorist and that he does not plan on leaking any of these particular credentials. He was just kind of doing this to show you how vulnerable Mac Rumors site was. So that was one of the breaches. Another breach from the week was early in the week we learned that 
Cracked.com was hijacked by attackers, and some attackers were able to inject malicious code into the Cracked.com website so that it used a particular exploit kit, something called the Nuclear Pack, to serve up malware, and it was apparently serving up the zero-access botnet Trojan. And by the way, if you haven't heard of Cracked.com, it's a popular comedy site. According to some research, it's one of the top 300 visited sites in the U.S. So the takeaway there is if you happen to visit that site, especially during last weekend, you might want to make sure your computer is not infected with new malware. Finally, I have a really quick update on the Adobe breach. You remember Adobe uh, was breached by attackers, and the attackers stole anywhere from 3 million user credentials to 152 million user credentials, depending on who you believe. In any case, the user credentials were leaked to the public, and many good guys and bad guys have gotten access to them. And Facebook did something interesting this week. They took those credentials, and they actually went through them to see if any of the emails or, or the users affected were also Facebook users. And if so, they actually warned those Facebook users to change their password. So while I really hope that these sort of credential leaks don't become very common, I think it's actually kind of smart of Facebook to actually go through these leaks and see if they can help out their user base. Because usually when you have these password leaks, the attackers don't only use them against the site they've attacked, but they use them against all the other sites knowing that people share their password everywhere quite commonly. For my final story this week, I want to share some InfoSec news from the APAC region. Over the last few weeks, our VP of Sales in APAC has been talking about a, a Singapore-related hacking incident. Without going into all the details, apparently Singapore is starting to consider passing some laws uh, that might make it so that news sites will have to pay some fees if they have uh, lots of news posts and get a certain amount of hits. On top of that, they may be under some regulation from the government that might censor them and prevent them from posting uh, certain religious material and stuff like that. Well, apparently some anonymous related hacktivists in Singapore and other APAC countries did not like this, and they posted a video warning the Singapore government that if they did did pass this law, they would start hacking Singapore government sites. And apparently when this happened, the attackers uh, who, who attack under the anonymous banner did end up attacking about 19 different Singapore government sites. They ended up defacing the Prime Minister's site and a number of other sites as well. So Singapore's Prime Minister said he was aggressively going to go after any of these sorts of, of hackers using uh, Singapore's computer misuse uh, regulations and laws. And the update from this week is they did actually arrest a 35-year-old man who was responsible for defacing some of these sites and he apparently uh, faces the potential of three years in jail and up to a 10,000 Singapore dollar fine or more. They also have five other uh, suspects in custody as well. So it's a very interesting story that's causing a lot of waves in the InfoSec community in the APAC region so I just thought I'd mention it. Well, that's it for this week's quick video. As always, there's a bunch of other stories, so make sure to check out our blog post for the video where I'll post reference links to other stories as well. On top of that, you should follow our WatchGuard Security Center blog regularly since there's a lot of regular security posts there. And you can follow me on Twitter. I'm at SecAdept, or follow WatchGuard at WatchGuardTech. As always, thank you for watching, and here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you.